welcome to the Voice of Triumph. My name is Ugochuk Ibazo, and um, it's our World Room service online, our Thursday service online. I'm sure God has a word for you and your family to take you from where you are to where God wants you to be. It's possible you're still at work. Can you get your colleagues together? Let's go right into the world. You're on transit. Connect with us. Let's go right into the world. You're home. Get your family together. Let's go right into the word of God. Today we're starting a new series that I call the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It will be very interesting. I want to encourage you not to miss any of the series. We're looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when you look at the scriptures, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are actually part of the spiritual gifts that have been given to the church. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are part of the spiritual gifts that are meant to be in operation in the body of Christ. And we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and that's an anchor scripture mainly for the whole of this series. Amen? Acts, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're reading from verse 1. Now, verse 1 tells us why we're studying the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which, of course, are part of the spiritual gifts that we've been given. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. So why do we study the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it is because God doesn't want us to be ignorant of spiritual gifts. And remember, I began by saying that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are actually part of the spiritual gifts. Now, before we begin to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I'd like to say a few things about spiritual gifts. You see, because it would help us, this understanding would help us even as we study the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to say a few things about spiritual gifts praise god hallelujah the first thing i want to say here is that you can actually hinder the anointing amen you can hinder the anointing and i like to read some of the things that i've written here prayerfully by the inspiration of the holy spirit i like to read them so i don't miss out on anything so the first thing i like us to know about spiritual gifts before we begin to look at the gifts of the holy spirit which are actually part of the spiritual gifts is number one you can hinder the anointing amen so what are we saying here that even when someone recognizes that they uh, they have a gift or they've been given some gifts spiritual gifts you know working in their lives um, even after they recognize it it's important that they know that they need to find a way to keep this gift flowing or keep keep the gifts working in their lives because you see you can hinder the gifts from working in your life you can hinder the gifts from flowing freely amen if you if you live in a certain way or you do not understand how to relate with the gifts that you have so let me let me let me write something see, read something i have written here even after a person recognizes that they've been anointed for a particular spiritual gift or gifts they have to ensure that they live in a way such that this grace or this anointing is not hindered but allowed to flow freely because you can hinder it. Amen? So what we're saying is the fact that you have a gift doesn't mean it would automatically work in your life. There is a way to get the gift working or to allow the gift to work freely. There's also a way to hinder the gift from working freely. And that's what we're saying here that you can hinder the anointing and there are two ways that you and i can hinder the anointing or you and i can hinder the gift from working freely in our lives even though we have them amen the first one is fear fear is one of the greatest hindrances to the operation of spiritual gifts in the lives of people god's people fear and that's why if the gift that we have or the giftings that we have or the gifts we've been anointed for, if they are going to flow freely, they're going to operate freely in our lives, we must deal with fear. Amen? We must deal with fear. And I have something written here. That fear is one of the greatest hindrances to the operation of spiritual gifts. Amen? This must explain why Paul, in speaking to Timothy, one of his protégés, begins to say to him, Timothy, you've been, you, you've been endowed with wonderful gifts. You need to begin to stir this gift in your life. And then Paul goes ahead and makes the connection between the operation of the gift in Timothy's life and the need for Timothy to deal with fear. Amen? We see that clearly. And that's what I have written here. Amen? Paul the Apostle in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6-7 to encouraged Timothy 
to stir up the gift of God in him by drawing his attention to the fact that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Let's read the scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. And then I'll say a few things here. Chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. Look at what it says here. Paul was admonishing Timothy concerning the spiritual gifts in his life. He said, Wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands. Now look at verse 7. Very interesting. Look at the connection. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. So what was Paul saying to Timothy? You have gifts. You have spiritual gifts in your life. But if you don't deal with fear, then you can't stir up these giftings. You can't use them. Amen. And the gift, the gift you have can be a blessing to your generation if you don't deal with fear. Because Paul clearly knew that fear will hinder the gifts from working freely in the life of Timothy. Again, I have something written here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul, the apostle in this scripture, encourages Timothy to stir up the gift of God in him by drawing his attention to the fact that God has not given us the spirit of fear. He obviously knew that fear could hinder Timothy from exercising his gift. That's what we're saying here. Amen. Paul knew that Timothy could be hindered by fear. And so he encourages him. He said, God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. So don't let fear hinder the operation or the manifestation of the gift that you have. Amen. Maybe you're, you're watching this video from wherever it is across the world. And you're beginning to notice that this applies to you. Maybe you are afraid of exercising the gift you recognize that have been given to you, you know, by God, the spiritual gifts in your life. Maybe you've been hindered by fear, fear of, you know, what would happen to your reputation if you try to exercise a gift and it doesn't work. Fear of, you know, or, you know what would happen if you try to exercise a gift and it is not received. All of, all of that kind of fear has been hindering you. God has a word for you. Amen. And what is God's word for you? Hear me, child of God. If you're afraid of your reputation and what would happen to your reputation if you try to operate the gift you have and something happens, let me tell you what God has sent me to tell you. That if there's anyone who has a reputation to defend, it is not you. It is God himself. And I tell you something, God knows how to defend his reputation. Amen. You know, the Bible says that Jesus Christ in Philippians 2 made himself of no reputation. So now you understand why the gifting, the spiritual gifts in the life of Jesus could operate freely, could walk freely, could flow freely. Why? The Bible says Jesus made himself of no reputation. Praise God. And so there was nothing hindering the gifts of God in his life from walking. Hallelujah. And that's what God has sent me to tell you. Don't worry about your reputation. God knows how to defend his own reputation. He's the one who gave you the gift. Yield yourself to him so that this gift can flow freely in your life. Amen? And so I have that written here. Are you afraid of exercising your gift? Are you wondering what will happen to your reputation if you try and fail? I have a word from God for you. If there's anyone with a reputation to defend, it is God. You go ahead and leave the rest to him leave the rest to him amen so first of all if you and i are going to allow the gift that we have the spiritual gifts we have to flow freely to operate freely in our lives so we can be a blessing to our generation we must deal with fear we must deal with fear the second thing we must deal with is our love work amen we must pay attention to our love work if you and i are not going to hinder the gift of god in our lives if we're going to allow the gifts to work freely so we can be a blessing to our generation to our world so we can use our gifts to serve the kingdom that we belong to to serve our lord jesus christ we must you know pay attention to our love work we must be very intentional about our love work amen and i have that written here that working in love enhances the flow of the anointing Walking in love enhances the flow of the anointing, either for a spiritual gift or a ministry office. Amen? In other words, if we are not walking in love, we can hinder the flow of the anointing of God upon our lives. And of course, that would affect you know, how we, we operate the gift we have, how we express the gift we have, how we exercise the gift we have, or how we can exercise the ministry that God has given 
to us. There is a connection between working in love and succeeding in using your giftings and, you know, succeeding in the ministry that God has given to us. And I have something written here also. Praise God. Again, this explains why Paul began to connect the stirring of Timothy's gift with the fact that God has given us the spirit of love. Let's go back to that scripture. Look at it. Amen. Again, you see the connection. First of all, Paul says to Timothy, use your gifts. God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. And then again, he says to Timothy, use your gift because God has given us the spirit of love. So there's a connection between how we walk in love and how we can freely allow the gifts we have to be a blessing to our generation. You know, between how we walk in love and how the anointing for the gift and the the ministries that we receive from Jesus Christ can flow in our lives. Praise God. Let's read it again. He says, verse 6 verse 6. He says, Wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands. And then verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, number one, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And of a sound mind. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I have something written here. Amen. Again, Paul begins to say to Timothy that there's a connection between the stirring of Timothy's gift with the fact that God has given us the spirit of love. What is God saying here? That hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, and all such things that are contrary to love can hinder the flow of the anointing and the operation of spiritual gifts in our lives. In other words, when we walk in hatred and we walk in unforgiveness and bitterness and envy and resentment and all of the things that do not reflect the love of God, These things can hinder the flow of the anointing of God upon our lives, the anointing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It can hinder, you know, the flow of the gifts of God that we have. And the result is that we can be the blessing that God ordained for us to be to our generation and to the world around us. Show me a man or a woman who is mighty in their spiritual gift. And I'll show you a man or woman who is intentional about walking in love. Hatred will hinder the flow of the gifts. Bitterness and resentment and anger and unforgiveness will hinder the flow of the gifts of God in our life. So, you know, these are things that I thought we should know before we begin to go to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Another thing I think we should know, I just rec- remember that, is that the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Amen. Romans chapter 11 verse 29 and I'm reading the New Living Translation. Romans chapter 11 verse 29. I'm reading the New Living Translation. Praise God. Now look at what it says here. It says, for God's gifts and his calling can never be withdrawn. Wow, this is huge. Amen. Can never be withdrawn. And this calls for a lot of caution in the church. Let me read the King James translation. It says, For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Amen. So I have something written here. Let me read it because it was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit so I don't miss out on anything. It says, God never withdraws a gift or calling once it is given to a person. Amen. Once it is given to a person. Even when God is not really pleased with a person, A gift may still function in their lives from time to time. This is serious. Even when God is not really pleased with a person, a gift may still function in their lives from time to time. And this calls for serious caution. It calls for serious caution. Because what it means is that the operation of a spiritual gift in a person's life is not necessarily a sign of God's approval. This is huge. Amen? So what we're saying here is that once a gift has been given to someone, God doesn't withdraw it. Once he calls a person into an office, he doesn't withdraw it. And so we're saying that it calls for a lot of caution, amen, in in the body of Christ amongst believers. Because it means that even when God is not particularly pleased with a person's life, the gifts may still work in their lives from time to time. Amen? And so if the person is not mature enough to recognize that the gift and the calling of God is not without, is without repentance, they might imagine that, well, the fact that they are living contrary to the will of God, 
The fact that they are living rebelliously to God and yet the gifts are working in their lives may mean that you know, God doesn't care about the way they live. They may imagine that it means that God really doesn't care about the way they live. And that's dangerous. Amen? So we must mature to the point where we recognize that you know, what, what, what shows the approval of God is not because a gift is working in the life of someone. No. Amen? That the fact that a gift is operating in a person's life does not necessarily depict approval from God. There are other things we should look out for. And that's why when you look at the Bible, God never said you will know them by their gifts. No. Thank God for the gifts. He said you will know them by their fruits. You know, the, the gifts are different from fruit. So God says we should recognize his approval in the life of a person by the fruit we see. What fruit are we talking about? The fruit of the Spirit manifesting in the life of that person, not the gifts. Because the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. A, a man's life or a woman's life may not necessarily be pleasing to God. And yet because God has given them the gifts, the gifts will work in their lives from time to time. Amen. And that's what I have written here. So we're saying that, you know, that the operation of a spiritual gift in a person's life is not necessarily a sign of God's approval. For example, when Moses in defiance to God struck the rock rather than speak to the rock, he disobeyed God. A miracle still occurred, even though God was greatly displeased with Moses. Moses was a man who operated um, um, the gift of the Holy Spirit called walking of miracles. And when you read the scriptures, you see that work in his life so many times and in so many ways. And on this particular occasion, he disobeyed God. In fact, he rebelled against God. He defied God. And God was displeased. And even though God had made up his mind that Moses wasn't entering into the promised land, yet the gift of the working of miracles still was expressed in the life of Moses. A miracle occurred. That gift of the Holy Spirit still worked in his life. Why? Because the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. Amen. <laughs> so this is huge. So you see, anybody who was observing the life of Moses at that time would have said, wow, God has so approved of this man. Even though he disobeyed God, God didn't care. No, God cared about his disobedience. God was displeased, and yet the gift worked in his life. Why? The gift and the calling of God is without repentance. Numbers 27 to 12. We see the story here. Amen? We see the story here. But before we read it, let me read something I wrote here. Let's go back to what I wrote here. For example, when Moses in defiance to God struck the rock, rather than speak to it, a miracle still occurred, even though God was greatly displeased with him. The reason was simple. Number one, the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. Number two, God needed to provide water for his people. So this is huge. You know, for anyone under the sound of my voice from wherever you are watching from across the world, maybe God is talking to you. Maybe you notice that you're living your life in a certain way that you know is contrary to the will of God and yet you're still operating the gifts of the of your, your, your the spiritual gifts are still manifesting in your life, amen. And yet you can you see miracles in your ministry. You see miracles operating around you, and you're wondering whether God doesn't care about the way you live. He cares. This is dangerous. The reason why the miracles are still happening, the reason why the gifts are still working, is because the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. And God is saying, look, you need to change your ways. Don't get carried away by the fact that the gifts are still working in your life. You need to get back to the place of obedience and begin to align your life with the will of God. That's what God is saying. And I'm talking to myself as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we see the story in the life of Numbers 27 to 12. Numbers 27 to 12. Praise God. Look at it. Numbers 27 to 12. Look at it. It says, verse 7 to 12. Look at it. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather the assembly together, you and Aaron, your brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and it shall bring forth to them water out of the rock, so that you shall give the congregation and their beast water to drink. Verse 9, And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him, 
and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, you rebels, must, you, must we fetch water out of the rock? And Moses lifted up his hand in defiance and disobedience to God, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, rather than speak to the rock. And the water came out. Miracle happened. And the congregation drank and their beast also. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and said, Because you believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land that I swore to give them. Moses disobeyed God. God was displeased. And yet the gift of the working of miracles was operating in his life. Because the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I thought it was important for us to recognize this. That's why you never, you never, you never follow a man because of the, 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 the spiritual gifts in their lives. Thank God for spiritual gifts. But what you should be looking out for are the fruit in the life of a person not the gifts working in their life. And I think that this is really, really important, especially as we live in a generation that is looking for supernatural manifestations. Everybody is looking for a prophet to prophesy into their lives. Everybody is looking for an apostle to do something in their lives. Everybody is looking for one great man or woman of God to perform a miracle in their lives. Thank God for all of that. But please, when you're looking out for people, look out for fruit. What fruit do they have? Not giftings, no. The Bible says, by their fruit we shall know them. By their fruit we shall know them. That's what, that, that's what the Bible says. Amen? And it's important that we recognize that. That by their fruit we shall do what? We shall know them. They didn't say by their giftings. No, 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 no. Praise God. Let's read this one in, in Luke, Matthew twelve thirty three. He says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. The tree is known by his fruit. He said, oh, generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak forth good things? For out of the abundance of the other mouth speak it. Amen. So it begins to reveal to us that by the fruit we are known, not by the giftings, no, by the fruit. And what fruit is he talking about? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at our Galatians quickly. That's what God is saying, that we, we, we recognize God's approval by the fruit we see. Not the giftings, by the fruit we see, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 22, Galatians 5, 22. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. So what we should be looking out for is fruit. And the other scripture says, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all righteousness, character. So we're not looking out for gifts. Thank God for gifts. But we're looking out for fruit, love, self-control, character. That's what we should be looking out for. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now having said this, let's begin to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, the scripture that brings out the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I will do the introduction and we will stop here today. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. Praise God. And then we're beginning for, from, from verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. Let's begin to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He said, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Amen. But the same Spirit. So it's talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit also called diversities of gifts. Now, let's look at the gifts. Verse 7, it says, but the, manifest, but the manifestation of the Spirit, the expression of this gift, is given to every man to profit with all. In other words, there's nobody in the body of Christ who doesn't have at least one gift of the Holy Spirit. So, stop saying that you have nothing to offer. You have something to offer. You need to find this stayed up. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Don't be afraid to use what God has given to you. God knows how to defend his reputation. Amen? So let's begin to look at the gifts. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, 
to another descending of spirit, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all this work at that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Dividing to every man severally as he wills. Praise God. So, having seen this, let me say one or two things and we close when we meet again. We'll begin to look at each of those gifts. Amen. When you look at the gifts listed here, there are actually nine gifts of the Holy Spirit lifted here or listed here. Nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me go over them again. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith or special faith. Amen. The gifts of healing. When it comes to healing, the gift is in plural, plural from gifts. The gifts of healing, the working of miracles, prophecy, amen, the sending of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, the interpretation of tongues. So there are actually nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. When we meet again, we'll begin to look at every one of them. It will be very interesting. Don't miss any of these um, episodes, please, so you can get to know the truth. You see, the more you understand these things, the more you can recognize the ones you have. You, you know, many Christians have spiritual experiences that they are concerned about and they are not able to interpret or explain. Meanwhile, these experiences are meant to point them to the possibility of certain spiritual gifts working in their lives. And you see, knowledge will enhance your understanding of what you have. So when we begin to study these gifts of the Holy Spirit, many of you will begin to recognize the ones working in your life and you're able to be a blessing to the world around you, to your generation, the way God ordained for you and I to be. And the truth is these gifts are meant to bring you to the place of relevance. Relevance not only in the kingdom of God, but relevant to your generation. Praise God. Hallelujah. When we meet again, we begin to look at every one of them specifically. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, before we pray, before we close, I'd like you to, sh I'd like you to pray a prayer. Just a prayer, simple prayer. Amen. Say, precious Holy Spirit, now I've seen the nine gifts you've given to the church. And I know that at least I have one of those gifts working in my life. I'm asking Holy Spirit, reveal the gifts you've given to me. Reveal my gift to me that I may recognize it that I may begin to deploy it, that I may be a blessing to my generation in the name of Jesus. Talk to the Holy Spirit right now. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, let their gifts be made known to them because you said that, you know, these gifts are given to everybody, everybody in the body of Christ to profit with all. In other words, there's no member of the body of Christ, no believer who doesn't have at least one gift from you precious Holy Spirit, reveal the gifts you've given to them, that they may be begin to recognize them and begin to deploy them, that they may be a blessing to their generation, even as we live in these last days, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. I thank you because I know you're doing this already. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Your time of relevance has come. In Jesus' mighty name. I do not want to close the broadcast without giving someone an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of their lives. Maybe that's why you tuned in in the first place. Wherever you're watching from across the world, you like to surrender your life to Jesus. Can you say this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart. You died for me. On the third day, God raised you from the dead. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again into the family of God, the greatest family in creation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, should you want us to pray for you, be free to call any of the numbers on the screen. Our team of prayer warriors will be glad to engage with you. Or should you want to share a testimony of the impact of this broadcast on your life, your family, your community, be free to call any of the numbers on the screen. We'll be glad to get back to you. Till we meet again, keep working in this consciousness. Remember that, you know, the, God doesn't want us ignorant of spiritual gifts. And remember the things we should know about spiritual gifts, that you can hinder the anointing either by fear or not walking in love, and that the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. And then remember also that there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Your days of stagnation are over. Your days of relevance are here. I love you. Bye-bye.